So, um, without further ado, I'm going to call up Mike Sforma. Uh, no extended introductions. He'll tell you all about himself and how Operation Backbone came about, what they do, and, and the sheer hope and comfort they give to, to hundreds, if not more, uh, wounded veterans and active duty members of the armed forces. So without further ado, uh, please give Mike Sorma a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the kind invite and I know there's a lot of things you guys can be doing right now with your family and friends, so it means a lot you guys would take your time to, to come out here. The email I got from Cliff Benson is, is from the Buffalo Sabres. Um, he wanted to, again, extend his apologies. Also from Terry Pagula, who's with Operation Backbone. He owns the Buffalo Sabres and the Buffalo Bills. He also just wanted to let you know he wouldn't make it regardless because he's busy beating the New York Jets. That came from him. Not me. Not me. It came from me. He owns the team. It's, it's, it's a... Yeah, it's, it's a it's a lot. So once again, no, I, I do appreciate it. So my name is Mike Saforma. I'm the founder and CEO of Operation Backbone. So just a quick synopsis. Operation Backbone is a nonprofit I started about three years ago. And the genesis is quite simple. We provide crucial brain and spine surgery for active duty soldiers around the US and now around around the entire world post rehabs with the National Hockey League. So we have Terry Pagula who owns the Buffalo Bills, Buffalo Sabres. We have Charlie Jacobs who owns the Boston Bruins. We have Vinick who owns the Tampa Bay Lightning and we also have Madison Square Garden and the New York Rangers. So basically what that means is we get the most severely wounded soldiers, we work on them, brain or spine, do what we have to do and then we actually team the soldier up with the active players in the NHL. So that's kind of an overall view of who we are and what we do. I was up this morning at 4 o'clock, and just to, just to give you the severity of some of the cases, we had a female, 21 years old, put, put a, um, she, um, a severe TBI, triple disectomy that we were going to work. She put a gun in her mouth today. She blew her head off. So we have to, um, unfortunately, I have to leave later on today and uh, take care of the funeral arrangements. And then the other day, we also had another female that uh, was 23 and hung herself in the bathroom door. So these are some of the things that Operation Backbone has to deal with. And the reason I'm telling you this is it, it, it's one thing for you guys to understand what we do. It's another thing to see it. And it's a nightmare. It's not just for the soldiers, but it's for the entire family. And to come here and have a cup of coffee and, and not worry about what's going on in the world right now is, is because of these men and women. They don't just sacrifice their bodies. It's not the soldiers, it's the entire family. It's the three-year-old that locks himself in the closet because his dad comes out with a stick. Uh, it's the fights between the husband and wife. It's, it, it becomes very, very complicated and it becomes very overwhelming for a lot of people. And when I first started this, we had a tremendous success from day one. We worked on a, uh, his name was Hugh Sullivan. And we did a uh, spine stem with Boston Scientific. We basically, we inserted electrodes into his spine and long story short, he's doing great. I just assumed they would all be like that. So I quickly learned how wrong on every front I've been. And I'm a Navy guy, so I really thought I saw it all in the Gulf War and Mozambique and you name it. I've been all over the world and I really thought I understood how the world worked, but I was extremely surprised how ignorant I was. So this journey has not just saved me in so many ways, personally and professionally, but it's opened my eyes to things that are much bigger than me. Having people support Operation Backbone is wonderful, but to have people give you their, their hard-earned money like you guys did today, it, it's, it's overwhelming to me. And the amount is irrelevant, whether it's $10, 2000 $5 million, it's all the same. It's your money that you're giving to other people to go do great things. And for that, I want to say thank you to everybody. And you guys should give your round of stuff because I, I appreciate it. Thank you. On a good note, 
we had another great successful case today and uh, I, I basically said before you shoot yourself what I like to do is just let's try one more time and we did it today and he woke up at 7.30 he was crying because he thought he was paralyzed. Um, the great news is I said we'll move your legs and he's not used to that because he's in so much pain so he couldn't feel the pain so he just assumed he was paralyzed. So for that, I just it's, uh, it brings a tear to my eye to think about this guy who's up walking around right now after 10 years of, of pain and severity. And his wife called me and said, this is the first time in 10 years I've been safe to go in the room. So there's a lot that goes into just healing these guys. This is not a, this is not a, a quick fix. The physical part is the easy part. It's the mental part afterwards. It, it's just, it's devastating. And, I, and, and I, I want to labor this point only because when you see someone, you say, thanks for their servants. It's not them. You have to think about the wives that take care of the checks, that take care of the bills, that take care of the kids, the ones that have to take care of everything when the soldier's gone for 8, 9, 10, 11 months and have to turn around and go back to serve their country so us can sit here and not worry about it. So it's more than just saying thanks. So... To get back to the Operation Backbone, so here's how it all started. I hurt myself working out about three years ago, squatting. It has nothing to do with the military. I got a bill in the mail for an x-ray for about $126. So I live in uh, Maryland on the Eastern Shore. So I took the bill for $126 to the Washington, D.C. VA, and I asked them if they would pay it, and they said no. And I said, well, where's the department that pays it? And I said, we don't have a de uh, department that pays it. You, you should have went to a certified VA center or to Walter Reed and got it paid. And I said, well, how am I supposed to drive an hour and a half to go to one of these places? And they said, well, that's up to you, but we're not going to pay the bill. So I came home and bitched and whined like I always do to my wife about this and that. And she said, either do something about it or stop. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change the way medicine is done around the entire world for the U.S. military. So I quit my job. Asked her if it'd be all right if I do it, and she said yes. So I went outside. <laughs> I sat in the garage, and I cried for about an hour thinking, what the hell am I going to do now? I'm not a doctor. I don't have a degree. I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I had to come up with a way of doing this. So I went to Buffalo, New York, where I'm originally from, and I went to the UBNS, which is called the University of Buffalo Neurosurgery Department. I sat down and talked to the chair, Dr. Levy, and the rest of the team, and they said, of course, we'll help out. Then I said, if I could just get one of the Buffalo Sabres to give me a jersey, it would be great, because the, the arena's right down the street from UBNS. And I happened to bump into the owner, and I told him, hey, Terry, this is what I'm doing. My name's Mike Saforma. I want to change the world. Look at me, blah, blah, blah. And he said, yes, I'll help you. So I said, All right. So I said okay. And uh, it just kind of grew from there. Now I'm proud to say that we have locations. Uh, we have Johns Hopkins, we have Beth Israel, Mass General, UPMC is Pittsburgh, we have UCSD San Diego, we have Houston, Denver, New Orleans. Oh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something else. And also we're working on Germany, Africa, Spain, Italy, France, and Great Britain. So we're able to service men and women all over the world for the top 3%. So my partners include the Marriott, so it's JP Marriott. We have Worldwide Marriott, that's, that's a, a tremendous supporter of ours. We also have the Buffalo Sabres, we have the Buffalo Bills, we also have the Boston Bruins, the New York Rangers. Verizon, JetBlue, we have a tremendous amount of support from the CEOs. And the reason I'm telling you this is it's not a organization that asks people for their money from a group and then that's that. These owners are personally involved. And I mean personally, as we use their private jets, because some of these guys are so severe they can't even stand. So one of the goals with the Navy SEAL that we have out of Tampa, we asked Terry, I said, look, I need your jet to go down there and pick this guy up. So they came down with us, and it took us three and a half hours to coax him out of his room. He hasn't left his house in about three years. So I said, look, I know what the plastic is there for. So he has plastic on the ground. I said, explain it to the two neurosurgeons I brought from Johns Hopkins in Buffalo and the owner of the team. And the goal was simple. He thought we were going to be another group that wants a photo op and will be a fraud. And what he was going to do was he just kind of rolls over, falls on the plastic, and then he can blow his head off and his friend can wrap him in a body bag before his wife and kids come home. So this is what they were planning. So I said, well, before you do that, let me, let me, let me try this. So we left. And 
uh, we came back about two hours later with the, the rest of the surgical team, and he was in the garage, and he had the gun in his mouth. And right behind us were his wife and kids. So there's a grown man, SEAL Team, I think he was SEAL Team 3, completely naked, loaded on every type of narcotic you could ever imagine, with a shotgun smashed in his mouth, with teeth bleeding and busted all over the place, with his three kids grabbing the gun thinking it's a joke. So I'm proud to say at this time the Navy SEAL is doing much, much better. He's not healed, he never will be. We make that very clear from day one. We're not a magic wand. I don't have all the answers. Some of the wounds are just too severe mentally and physically to fix. But the goal is there's always another day to live for your family. The problem is the amount of narcotics these people take. Baclofen, robaxin, morphine, ketamine. Ketamine is a horse anesthesia. If you guys, were, anybody here was to take one, you'd probably just pass out and die. Some of these guys are taking six or seven a day. How they're even alive, I have no idea. So one of the biggest things we have to do is get these guys under control, so we have to do a tremendous amount of mental counseling. It's not psychology. It's more of this is who you are, this is who you will never ever be, and this is what options are available to you. And it's hard for me to tell people you're never gonna be a Navy SEAL, you're never gonna be a Green Beret, you're never gonna be a fighter pilot anymore. Those days are long gone. And these guys live for this stuff. They've trained for this stuff. They've sacrificed their entire life, their body, and their family for it. So the mental side of what Operation Backbone is, is really the, what took me by surprise. The physical wounds are one thing, but the mental side is incredible. The interesting part, though, is I did get a call from a wife yesterday, and she says, you know, I've been married to my husband 23 years. He did a triple disectomy on him. He's in front of some guy named Mario Lemieux, some hockey guy, I don't know who she's never heard of, some Mario guy. And he says, take your medication and do your work, and he's doing it. I've been married 25 freaking years, and this guy comes along, and he tells him what to do, and now all of a sudden he's doing it. Who the hell do you think you are? And I was like, look, I didn't mean to get you in trouble. I just want to <laughs> So there's a lot of good things that come out of it, too. But um, with, with Operation Backbone, the, the severity of what we do is triple disectomies. We do broken backs, we do broken spines. Most of these guys are just absolutely destroyed. So I'll give you one example. One guy fell out of a helicopter, shot in the head on the way down, broke his neck in three spots. Helicopter goes, spins out of control, and five guys fall on top of him. Of course, they're all shot and banged up, and they have to hike out of Iraq for 27 miles. It takes three weeks to find these guys. So, and of course, instead of reporting it, what do they do? They, get as much medication as they can, as much beer as they can, and they just keep going and going and going and going and going. And eventually what happens is things just break that cannot be repaired. And when we get a hold of them, the first thing we ask is where did it happen? And a lot of them won't tell us. They don't want to tell us, they don't want help. I'm a Navy SEAL, I'm this, I don't need help. The wives have a very difficult time getting it out of them because a lot of these guys do black ops, so a lot of them are attached to the CIA, so a lot of them you can't use their names or faces. So there's a lot of things that go into the mental side of trying to put it all together. But it's amazing when you sit down in front of some guy who owns a sports team and he says, tell me about this, 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 and this, and this guy walks in from the Hall of Fame, Pat LaFontaine, who's part of our group, and says this, and they start just pouring out their heart and soul. And that's the beauty of the National Hockey League and who these guys are and what they've done, and especially the Buffalo Bills. They've just been a tremendous help. Woody Johnson, who owns the Jets, has been a tremendous help. A lot of these guys that we work with, you'll never hear their names and they're never going to see their faces because these guys don't want any PR for what they're doing. We've got a lot of great people that own NASCAR teams that lend us their Jets, and they're, they're huge donors, but they under one circumstance. Like, Mike, you can never use my name. Don't ever tell anybody what we're doing. So there are a lot of great people out there. And one thing I've learned, when you see people that have a lot of money and a lot of wealth, you'd be amazed who they're really helping behind the scenes. And that's something that I've learned very fast. So there's a lot of great people out there. The situation with the wives is very unique because we do work on a lot of women. And this is all brand new to me. And the first one was an IED explosion and it was a nightmare. She's about 22 years old. She went to boot camp with two of her friends, an ID 
bomb goes off, I think it was in Afghanistan about three years ago. She's blown through the windshield about 45 feet, Burke's bone, well, just about every body, and every bone in her body was broken. She turns around, and both her friends that she served with the new one went to high school were on fire, so she had to shoot them both in the head. So the, um, the, the mental part of that has been a very difficult thing for me to learn. Her breasts were ripped off, her ovaries were torn apart. And the biggest thing that she kept telling me over and over was about her friends. Is there any way that we could help her friends? And this girl was covered from head to toe in burns. So we got some plastic surgeons involved and we helped her. But my point was I was just stunned and I was overwhelmed to think how I bitch and complain and whine about the littlest things. And here's this girl that they literally take to UCLA and other places and they strap her down and they start scraping her body. And the screaming and the painting is just horrible. And I'll never get it out of my mind. And um, it's what these people go through is incredible. So I say this because next time you really think about it and complain, you really got to be happy and thankful for everything that you got. None of these people asked for this war. Whether you agree with it or not is irrelevant. They're over there. They're doing their best, and they're supporting their country. Also, another great partner of ours is Mr. Marriott and uh, the Shaner Corp. Shaner Corp is a group out of Pennsylvania. All these guys that we work with are all Penn State guys. And they're tremendous. Land Shaner owns it. He, they run a lot of hotels around the world, from Tuscany, from Italy, you name it, um, all over the U.S. And he's another guy. Lance is another person that has, has gone through a lot of tragedy in his life, and he's seen it and understands what's going on. Um, the Boston Bruins, Charlie Jacobs owns the Boston Bruins. And uh, actually, he lives in Buffalo next to, uh, next to Terry, who owns the Bills. And he started a group called JI. It's called the Jacobs Vascular Institute, which is located in Buffalo. So his, son, or his brother, Mr. Jacobs' brother, died of a very odd neurological disease, I think about six years ago. So he said, take a bunch of money and build a JI. It's a world-class facility located in Buffalo attached to UBNS, where we do our endovascular, minimal invasive, and open cranial. So we have people from all over the world that fly in and learn the latest techniques. So the group that we work with are all handpicked for brain and spine and endovascular. Most have about 22 years of hands-on experience. And then what we do is we teach the latest and greatest technology from, um, uh, from the vascular side, mapping it in the vascular ways. And we bring people in and we show them how to do it. And then we introduce the Pentagon and the Department of Defense who we work with. So the Pentagon is actively involved in what we're doing, JSOC, MARSOC, USOC. So all these initials, they're all fancy, but basically they're all special forces coming out of the WTC which is the Warrior Transitions Group. And then they're handpicked and selected by our, by our team, and then we're brought into the pipeline that we work on here, she. So it's a very complex, sophisticated group of people that we have that have to deal with a never-ending problem. And just keep this in mind that when you hear somebody that says they have a TBI, Sometimes it's not physical, which is the hardest thing for people to understand. Because you see people and you say, oh, he or she's crazy. But then you realize what they've gone through and they start to tell you. And to be 22 years old and have 36 confirmed kills is a very difficult thing to go through. To be 26 years old and have 50 confirmed kills is not normal. And a lot of them can't sit next to glass. A lot of them can't be in bright lights. A lot of them can't be around certain things or certain people because it gets, it's just too much for them. So think about next time you hear when you see somebody that's crazy. What they actually do and what they go through is just absolutely incredible. And one of the, one of the things that really haunted me was the age of the kids uh, with some of the snipers that we work on. And I mean that as the kids that they have to shoot. So they got seven, eight-year-old kids. And it's amazing. You can see these guys. They talk to you. See, that kid's 39 inches. That kid's two foot four. So what they do is these people hide the IEDs or the bombs and their, and their vests behind the kids, and they use them as shields. And then what they're able to do is the snipers are able to find the, the right size child. So when the child walks by them, they're able to shoot the child that goes through that through the skull and then to the liver and detonates the bomb so they save the rest of the troops. So 
the psychological problems is absolutely incredible. The RAND study corporation came out, there's about 490,000 of our soldiers that have traumatic brain injury. We have 22 a day that commit suicide. Eight of them, most, of, most, uh, most uh, shoot themselves in the head. The women usually hang themselves, um, that we know of. We have a tremendous problem in the military right now with, with what's going on with the amount of narcotics the morphine, and all the different things that these guys have direct access to. So with that being said, I just want you to be aware of what Operation Backbone is. We're not here to try and save the world. I gave that up about two and a half years ago when I figured out that uh, the physical wounds are one thing. But what we do is pretty awesome with a tremendous amount of great people that give up so much of their time, energy, calls at 3 o'clock in the morning, calls at 4 o'clock in the morning, flying out at all times all over the world to do this. So there's a lot of great people. We don't do a lot of advertising. We don't tell a lot of people about this. One is because none of us sleep and we have absolutely no time to do it. But the other thing is, too, is that none of these guys want any recognition. None of them. The owners, me, nobody. When you see these guys and what they've gone through and their wives who stick by them, it's really awe-inspiring. And the really neat thing about this is to see the wives that have to put up with this day in and day out. And they have to explain to them why their dad is there, why their dad's gone, or why dad did this, or why dad's not doing this. And it's a real hard thing to see. Six and seven year olds shouldn't have to go through this. But thousands and thousands of them do every day. They never complain, they never whine, and they never carry on. So when you see a veteran, it's not just that soldier. It's the whole family. So with that being said, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for the kind check. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for allowing me to be here. When you see some of these guys, think about their family and think about yours, how lucky you are and how blessed. Thanks.